Hello everyone, this is Chemdork, and welcome to another Minecraft video. This video is part two in the second episode of the Science of Minecraft series, where we are talking about TNT. Um, if you've missed part one, please, I would advise you to uh, watch that video first. A link will be provided on um, uh, this video. If you just click it and go ahead and follow the link to watch the first video. Otherwise, uh, go ahead and click the description in uh, this video, and you'll see there's a, a link there for the part one as well. So again, watch that first, uh, and then come on back here, and uh, we'll see this video as well. So in this second part of this uh, Science of Minecraft series on TNT, we're going to talk about how to make uh, a cannon, and more or less, uh, we're going to talk about why making a cannon works in, Minecra in Minecraft. Um, first, let's do a quick review about what uh, we've learned in the first episode, because it's very important here. So as you know, TNT, it's like any other block in Minecraft other than sand or gravel, where it floats. Uh, very odd in Minecraft, very odd in life, however, but uh, very normal in Minecraft for something to just float in the air. The, uh, when you activate this block, though, it, uh, a few things change. In fact, there are three changes that undergo um, uh, that this block undergoes when it is activated. When you left-click it, it bounces in one direction, first of all, and that direction is always going to be east and a tiny bit to the north. Secondly, the block then is, uh, is able to fall down because it's affected by gravity. And then finally, it becomes something known as an entity, which uh, is the reason why it falls down and is, is affected by gravity, but it also means that you could walk through it. So, um, entities, there are a few other things that are entities in Minecraft. One is, um, uh, is the player. The player is an enti entity, you are an entity in this game, the mobs are entities in this game, and entities follow uh, different rules than normal blocks in Minecraft. So for example, just as one example, uh, a player, if they fall into water, they get pushed to the side. So just like, uh, just like that, TNT in Minecraft, if, you, uh, if I place TNT here and then activate it, it'll get pushed to the side. And so um, I'm going to build this little rig here and show you. Uh, first, though, I'd like to show you this without the water there. And so what happens when we activate this without water? Well, again, it makes a little jump, it explodes, and my beautiful creation is totally destroyed. Eh, it's okay, I can build it again. So, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'll build it once more. There we go. This time, uh, oh, nice little torches. We'll put torches on there, just for fun. And uh, this time I'll add a TNT, and I'll add water. So the only difference here is that I added water. Let's see what happens uh, now. So you notice that the entity gets pushed against the wall, but um, the difference is that it doesn't destroy the structure. Not at all. None of these blocks, even torches, which have a blast resistance of zero, which means they are the first to go, basically, in Minecraft whenever uh, TNT is around, uh, remained, sta re remained, uh, uh, remained in place. Were not destroyed. Uh, but the player, me, for example, uh, if, you didn't, if you didn't notice, I'll do it again, I was hurt by this. The other thing that you might know is that I am pushed off the blocks by this. There is, so there's a force imparted on me, and essentially it, it acts as if the TNT blast is the same for me as it normally is. It just doesn't destroy any blocks. And um, to prove this, well, we'll notice that um, we have a, a block here. If we put TNT right here, this is a block. So um, unless it's activated, it's a block. So if we left click here this should not activate this block of TNT based on what we just see. Oh, and um, as you see it did not activate it. It did kill me, I was a little bit too close that time, but um, everything else was otherwise the same. So uh, just a minute while I reset and get my items back. Okay, I reset and uh, now, uh, uh, and I respawn rather, and now I, um, I reset the this, this system here. And uh, now that my inventory is totally screwed up, uh, let's go ahead and see what happens with, uh, with lava. Lava is also a fluid in Minecraft, and maybe it'll behave similarly. So let's see. And this time I'm actually going to stand back. You notice that the TNT in this case catches on fire, but uh, otherwise, uh, you notice it's exactly the same as the water. So lava also works the same way. Uh, the difference, and I'll show you one more time what happens, when I activate the block, you notice how it doesn't get pushed against uh, this front block like the water pushed it. And that's the only difference between lava and water. Lava doesn't really push things, water does. But um, 
We know that entities, though, were pushed off, just like I was, and I was hurt, so we would expect that this TNT, if I activate it, it would actually get pushed. So, um, and this kind of is how you create a cannon. So, uh, let's try it. Let's activate this TNT, and then activate this one. So we activate it, wait a second, and then activate this TNT. We see that this one explodes, pushes that one over to here, and then it explodes again, like a cannon, like a good cannon should. Um, keeping our cannon intact. Another aspect of TNT that I didn't mention in the first video was that uh, TNT can be activated by redstone. So we have uh, a few different ways of activating TNT. Here's one where you actually power uh, all the way up to the, red the TNT itself. This can also have redstone right on top of the TNT, and if you're careful, you can also remove this redstone on the TNT without uh, activating it. The second way of powering TNT is pretty much the same as the first. This time we're powering this block directly, and uh, indirectly this, is pa this power is passed over to the TNT. Pretty much the same as the last setup, actually, um, but uh, just a slightly different wiring. Of course, you don't have to power the block of, uh, that's next to the TNT on the side. You can also power the blocks that are underneath the TNT as well. When we do this, you notice that the water flows past the TNT once it's been turned into an entity. And the last way of powering uh, TNT is by uh, powering it pretty much just directly. So here we go. As you notice, it being an entity allows the water to flow right past it. So now let's use some of the principles we've learned to make a mini little TNT cannon. Uh, again, this isn't really a tutorial for how to make a TNT cannon. We're just uh, doing this for scientific purposes, right? Uh, this is just an extension of what we made over there, just a slightly longer pool. Again, we can put TNT inside. These will be the charges. And then we need a bullet, so we'll put a bullet of TNT right there. Um, again, when this TNT is activated, it will bounce to the east, mostly, which is that way. So that means we'd like to keep it straight in the cannon, otherwise it'll go, uh, we'll uh, shoot a hook shot and it'll go over to here. And it won't be that efficient. So let's put a, a block right here. And then let's rig up a redstone system that'll allow us to power this cannon. Now, we can't uh, power these two with the redstone wire right along here, because that will cause this to um, uh, be powered as well, and we'll power all of them at the same time, which is what we don't want. We want a delay, and you need that delay. So uh, let's do it this way. Hook up a, a button here. This button will allow us to power these two blocks of TNT. And before I set up the second power uh, system, let me just uh, set these charges, and let's go up top and see what happens. Now, I want you to notice that these two TNT pieces, they kind of push together. They're pushed by this water, but they're both pushed together. And that's another property of uh, being an entity, allows them to stack up. You see this in mob elevators as well, where mobs stock, uh, stack up in the same sort of manner. And uh, you can have a very large amount of TNT just in this one tiny spot, which really concentrates this power, allowing to really push this, this bullet. So let's load up again. And now, power this block for the bullet. And uh, let me get back to you in just a second when I set this up. Okay, I finished making the final adjustments, and now we are ready to launch. So remember, we launch this one, then wait a few seconds and launch this one. That way, the bullet TNT is an entity by the time the charges go off. Now. Cool, although that didn't go too far. And oh man, that totally destroyed our cannon. Is there any way to make it go farther? And uh, actually, the answer to that is yes. There is a way to make it go farther. And we'll do that right now. So, uh, people have found that by placing a half block here, a half step, you can actually place the TNT on top of the half step. When it's activated, it falls down onto the half step, and then it sits basically right next to the two charge TNT blocks, which is uh, really, really beneficial. So let's go ahead and rebuild, uh, which is pretty much that. We're good to go, I think. 
Uh, let's put another one here just for just for good measure. And uh, let's try it again. Wait now. Cool. That one went pretty far. Now in these other TNT cannons you see, you can actually add multiple levels because once again, these TNT blocks can push against each other. So uh, let me make a, a few extra changes here and add some levels. So I've added a second level here. We'll put our charge blocks in the bottom just like before. The uh, bullet block goes right on top of that half step. And then the second level is again for charge blocks. Now uh, again, you want to make sure that you know which way the blocks jump. In this case, they jump to our right mostly, in which case um, that's why I have these blocks over to the right side. Because that way, when these jump up, they won't uh, fall out and not fall down into this into this trench. If it doesn't fall into this trench and falls right onto here, uh, you're going to get a destroyed cannon. So this should be working just fine. And it'll work just the same. So once again, our charge blocks, everything falls down. And we hit our bullet, and let's see what happens. And that one goes much farther. You see, it went way over there. So um, that's kind of how you build your cannons. And hopefully you've learned a few things about the principles of cannon building and why the cannons work and certain things you can do to improve your cannon designs. And the rest is pretty much up to you. This is a very general, very tiny cannon, um, but it actually works fairly well. Uh, not too much worse than a lot of the other good cannons out there. So... Uh, uh, and I found it actually works better to build up rather than out because it takes some time for those uh, TNT to actually get to the end of this trough. So um, making it any more than maybe one, maybe two blocks more is uh, a bit of an overkill. You're better off going up. So um, that'll do it for this vid. And uh, thanks a lot for watching and our, my videos. Please leave comments and suggestions if you have any ideas for other things that I can cover in my Science of Minecraft series or other things you'd like to see me uh, post on YouTube. Alright guys, uh, thanks a lot and I'll uh, see you in the next vid.